All right, everybody, it's uh, Ryan Herget and Austin Lahr. We are here today on Real Stories of Success podcast, and I'm super excited to sit down with my good friend and sales extraordinaire, Matt Krager. So, Matt, <laughs> welcome today, man. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Hey, Ab- Matt. Absolutely. Hey. <laughs> Wanted to really just kind of get started. Tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Kind of what's your story? How long you've been in this game of new home sales? How many homes have you had the opportunity to help people with? Kind of bring us up to speed on who is Matt Krager. Yeah, so um, I started really in in new home construction real estate um, in 2004. Um, Arbor Homes I started, which is uh, who I work for now, and, and, and will hopefully work for until until they they make me leave. But uh, uh, but uh, uh, I've been with them since really 2005. I'm um, as a sales manager for them. Um, I've done somewhere in the neighborhood of around 1,600 homes for the company. So holy wow. cow! Um, yeah, I've, I've I've done a few. So um, it's really what my passion is. I absolutely love talking to people, um, uh, showing them houses, getting them in uh, the home that's going to work for them and their family. So it's 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 what I absolutely Absolutely love to do. That's awesome, man. Well, I know most people out there already know who you are, right? 1,600 homes, that's a, an enormous, enormous amount. For maybe the best I've ever heard of. That's actually larger. I want to like consider this real quick. That's larger than the town I grew up in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sold more homes than the entire town of Hoover, Nebraska that I grew up yeah. in. That's insane, man. You figure two to three people a house? Oh, my God. You know, that's a that's a small village right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's definitely a lot of houses, but uh, I've worked hard and, and um, it's it's definitely like I said been my passion, so I, I truly enjoy it. Well, that's something I really kind of want to dive into because you do work hard, and everybody, you know, I think most people think that they work pretty hard, but your definition of work hard is so far above what I think most people's definition of hard work is. And I'm gonna give give everybody an example of that. But I can text Matt Krager on nine o'clock on a Sunday morning. I'm not saying do this because he probably hates me telling stories like this. No, go ahead. But (laughs) truly, in this business, it's all about speed of response because buyers in today's real estate market or any real estate market, they're not interested in waiting around for an answer. And you go out of your way to provide that answer quickly and efficiently. So tell us a little bit about that. I mean, what is it that has helped you do that? Because I know a lot of people that have been in this in, in the sales world or the new home industry for you know a long, long time and nowhere near have achieved that level of success. Yeah, there's, there's kind of a lot in there. Um, I, as far as my, my, my drive, um, my drive really is to to um, help people, um, you know, be the best that I can be, um, help real estate agents in the area, um, you know, help um, – people like Austin here with with uh, with with mortgages and getting people with, with the good people in the industry that that really can can help them get into a house and get into the loan program that they want to get into um, it, it's really overall just my my entire um, driving force um, is, is to truly just help whether it's you know Ryan on the real estate side or Austin on the on the mortgage side or or, or me over here at Arbor Homes helping helping us get people into into homes and communities and and just benefit them and benefit us as well too uh, as far as just kind of taking calls whenever I can uh, whether it's a text message email phone call usually if I'm up I'll answer so it is the kind of the kind of the world that we live in uh, people want a fast response it is it is truly um it's not um it's not um it's not generational anymore. I mean, it doesn't matter really, you know, what generation it is. They expect a, a very quick response. So, you know, getting back to somebody quick is 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 really um really what's needed in, in, in the time we are right now. So Yeah, we've talked about that before, right? Speed of response is is such a such a big deal. So a bunch of our audience out there, they're probably thinking, Hey, there's no way I'm gonna ever be able to get to a Matt Craiger level. Walk us through the beginning. How'd you get started? What's that look like? How did you grow? Yeah, I um so I, I was actually going to school to be a gym teacher. Um, I was, I I was kinda, yeah, I was kind of bartending in the evening times. Really, I uh, was trying to figure things out. Um, still, in, in in my early years, um, had a, a friend or two that was in real estate. Um, they convinced me to kind of come on with them. It was kind of a mom and pop shop out of Greenwood. Uh, back then, they were doing mortgages actually out of their house as well too with their with their real estate business. Um, learned real estate from them, uh, very basic levels. Um, learned a little financing from them as well too. I uh, had a friend of mine that worked for Arbor Homes. She asked me if I'd ever thought about, you know, getting into the new home world. Um, went and talked to her and 
felt like it might be something I'd be interested in, and, and quite honestly, the rest is history from there. I've been with Arbor ever since and, and absolutely enjoying it. So, See, I, I love that part of your story as well. I mean, I, I know so many people that, you know, real estate agents, lenders, new home sales consultants that go from, you know, company to company, kind of looking, you know, grass maybe greener on the other side type thing. But you truly have stuck with the same company, and you know that company's product truly in and out you there's probably not a question that comes up about any floor plan offered any financing program that you don't have the answer to what is it about working with a company like arbor that has just said you know this is my home this is where i want to be tell us about that I, I guess first and foremost, um, culture for sure. So Arbor Homes has a great culture. Um, whether you work out of the the home office or whether you're a field guy, you know, working in sales, working um, in construction, um, they absolutely the, just the culture of the company from from the top to the bottom is is hands down fantastic. Um, it's it's one of the best environments um, that you could possibly work in. So uh, we work hard, we play hard. We say that all the time over there. Um, I just honestly couldn't even see myself working for for another company. Um, as far is kind of knowing everything inside and out. I mean, I was when I was young in the business, I, I just studied. I studied as hard as I could, whether it was you know prints on floor plans, knowing everything you could possibly do with the homes, or learning the financing piece that to help people um, with with their mortgage uh, process. Um, you know, whether it was you know land development stuff, wh- whatever it was, I, I just tried to. Uh, learn as much as I can and be the the professional in all all areas that I could I could I could be in. So um, I've I've actually sat for the last 14 months. I was out of the field selling. Um, I became one of the regional managers over there. Um, I did enjoy my time um, as a regional manager, but uh, I learned a lot about kind of the backside of, of that process as well too. A lot of things I didn't see when I was selling, um, but then uh, quickly realized after about a year that my passion was back in the field. But uh, um, and I absolutely love it. I'm back out. I'm talking to people showing houses and, and kind of doing what I absolutely in, enjoy to do. But, um, you know, really just learning everything I, I could possibly learn about the about the business, new home construction, finance, everything. So yep. I, I think that's something that, you know, you do so well because it's easy to say, well, these people don't want what I have to sell. You know, and when you're in a model home, you've got that product to sell. And but you find solutions because you understand that, hey, maybe this floor plan doesn't work, but maybe there's not necessarily another plan. But what if we tweak this one or gain a better understanding of why does a customer want this to begin with? And then helping them solve problems along the financing end as well. I mean, so many people say, well, that's not my job. But you take it upon yourself to know as much as hell, almost any lender that I've worked with, you know, except maybe like an Austin caliber about what pro, you know programs are available. So tell us about that and how you really solve problems for people because you do that better than most yeah um well thank you but um i uh depending on the the neighborhood the area town the community that you might be in um you know, we build anywhere from usually 10 to 12 different floor plans. Um, so we normally have a floor plan that kind of fits what you're looking for. If you don't, absolutely. Then it's problem solving. It's like, hey, you know, let's th- let's look at this house here. Um, you know, I know I asked you a few questions or I, I heard you kind of talking and I know this was important to you or this is what you're trying to accomplish with your home. Have you thought about this? And, and it's really just getting out the floor plans, getting out the prints um, and showing people whether that's on the, on the actual print itself or, or online through a virtual tour or going out into a neighborhood and walking through a house under construction or a finished product. So, it, it, and, and just showing them all the different things that we can do with the home. Um, we are able to kind of stick frame all of our houses. Uh, for most folks, that's probably a somewhat of a new term, but basically we build them from the ground up. So, a lot of times we can customize the homes, even though we're not a custom home builder, uh, but we do have the ability to actually customize the, the, the plan. So, um, yeah, me, my, my wheels start turning and I start going, hey, have you thought about this? I know this was important to you. Have you, have you thought about this or would this work for you? Um, and really just start asking questions and more and more questions that I can ask and the more answers I get back uh, the better I can help you get into a home for sure um and the financing piece is just huge I, I don't I don't I don't care if you're somebody who's owned two three four houses or you're the first time a buyer walking in the door and not knowing anything about a mortgage um you know, you know, certainly there, there's just so many different products out there, so many different ways to structure a loan. Um, and, and whether you think you know it or not, um, you, you may, you, you probably don't. Uh, you probably don't know everything you need to you need to know about it. And, and if I can certainly help you uh, get into a better loan program or a better option that kind of fits more your needs or more your price point and looking at, you know, the price point of our homes um, and, and all that fits together, um, then I feel like I've done a good job. So. Definitely. Well, man, I can, I can speak to that. I've probably had a hundred billion conversations with you about finance <laughs> over the years. In fact, uh, when you are in the field, I, I feel like I talk to you more than I talk to my wife on a daily basis. <laughs> so you, you among 
like you are you're probably the only one in this industry that knows uh, that knows finance as well as you do on the on the sales side. A uh, couple questions though. What you know when we're talking about this and all these numbers and 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 you helping all these people, what keeps you motivated? Are you trying to beat your last record? Is it is it self motivation? You just got it that other people don't. What what <laughs> is it that keeps you motivated? Oh, I, all of the above, quite honestly. Um, I, I, I'm kind of wired, you know, pretty high strung. I, I talk a lot. I'm somewhat of a loud talker, but I, I just <laughs> I think everybody kind of knows that about me. But uh, um, I, I, there is a fire inside of me for sure. I mean, it just, it's just, it's just in me. It's part of who I am. I've done it so long. It's just kind of ingrained in my DNA. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, back to you know, just really wanting to help people. Um, you know, wanting to work hard for my family and, and take care of them, and, and just be a good steward to the communities, and 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 put good people in good homes and in good areas of town, and, and that's really just really where my, my drive comes from for sure. So that's awesome. No, that's really cool. You said something just a few minutes ago, and you talked about asking questions, and this is you know, you know, this show is all about providing practical, actionable takeaways for people to help them do things that they've never done. And one of those things specifically, kind of diving into a specific topic, but when somebody walks in the door, you do something very, very different than most. Most people stand back, let people just kind of mosey through, and then if they're interested, they answer questions. But you're very proactive, and you do ask questions, and you're listening to what they say, so that way you can better understand what is a value to this person and how to do that. So walk me through that. What are those questions? What are you looking for when somebody actually walks into a house? and you know, kind of tell us about that. Yeah, you know, everybody that, that does my job does it that definitely does it differently. Everybody has different personalities. I, I tell you, we have about sixteen people that do what I do for my company. We all do it probably sixteen different ways. Sure. But specifically for me, um, it's really walking up, it's it, smile on my face, greeting the customer, and, and welcoming them them in, which is honestly just something that this lost today. You know, whether it's whether it's in real estate, new home construction, or you walking into a, a restaurant, just that just that friendly, inviting atmosphere of a smile on your face, shaking their hands and looking them in the I eye. That, that's that's really where it starts. Um, and honestly, usually at that point, I'm probably not even necessarily talking about the houses or what we do right off the bat. I'm just getting to know them a little bit, you know, asking them their names, talking Don't to their report. kids. Um, you know, hey, it's a nice day out, or you, you have the car they're driving out front, whatever it may be. I, I honestly just want to get kind of get to know them. If I can get to know them, um, that's going to truly help me uh, help them get into a get into a, a home or right, you know, the right fit for them. So, you know, really from there, um, a lot of times it's just kind of a quick overview of what we do, who we are. I don't try to make it long or, or lengthy. People want to start to see uh, what they just walked into, so I'll give them a quick overview and and usually follow them into the house, give them some quick talking points, and and uh, I'll usually then at that point kind of let them walk through and do their own thing so I'm not standing over them all all weird and wondering what this guy's just standing next to me for the whole time so yeah uh, uh, the obvious yeah, kitchen right here <laughs> yeah, yeah hey that's the kitchen over there yeah we can see that no yeah you know, so I'll kind of let them do their thing and then I'll normally kind of follow back up with them a lot of times they're gonna have questions at that point and then I can start kind of diving into to, to more of what we do and more of what we can accomplish for them um, um, but that is truly how, how I do it um, a little bit more of a standoffish at certain points and a little bit more engaged in others and like I said, just a just a friendly face and and uh, trying to help them out. So, is there any specific questions? You know, kind of diving one level deeper mm -hmm. with this. But I know for me, when I'm talking to people on the phone or even having a conversation face to face, there's some specific questions to kind of dig another layer deep to kind of un better understand what's the real motivating factors. You know, sometimes it's maybe somebody walks into house and it's like, hey, what brings you guys out today? Or you know, is this your first time here? Or kind of you know, bring me up to speed on what's going on with your home search. Is there anything specific for you though that you're asking to really you know you get that customer that's not wanting to be engaging that you know kind of helps open the conversation along? Oh, it's it. I would say it definitely varies, you know, person to person for sure. How I how I attack that. I mean, you have some people that'll tell you their entire life story right off the gate and everything <laughs> they're wanting to do and look at. Uh, to others that just don't really want to open up to you and and, and everywhere in between. And I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, you know, a lot of times my very first question just simply is, 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 have you ever been into an Arbor Homes community? Have you been on our website? Have you looked at our product? Just really start with the basics. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from there, I'm going to try to find out maybe what their current living situation is. Are you renting? Do you currently own? Um, you know, what don't you like about your your, your current house if you, if, you, if you own a home? Um, there's probably a reason you're standing here with me. Um, if uh, if uh, if you don't, you know, if you don't like your current living situation, it may be anything from storage or, 
you know, family dynamic change to, you know, just moving across town for a job. So um, it's really just, like you said, diving into that next level for sure. Um, and just, just really trying to find out maybe what they're, what they don't like about their current living situation, maybe what they've seen um, as they've drove around, whether it's looking at existing homes or other home builders, um, and, and just trying to find out what their likes, dislikes are, what, you know, if they have any current pain, um, really just trying to kind of get them out of that situation. So for sure. Man, I hope everybody listened to that right there because there was six different talking points and questions that any salesperson can literally use in almost every situation that you just laid out right there as far as uncovering pain tell me you know bring me up to speed on where you're at what have you done are you familiar with us dude those are all questions that i think any salesperson that's working in the new home industry selling real anything can really take away from so hit rewind on there hit the back 15 seconds and listen to that you know because there was so much gold that you just shared there so i appreciate that yeah absolutely absolutely well speaking of that that actually leads into the next question let's talk about somebody out there that might be newer right so you've been doing this for a long time someone that's brand new could be a lender could be new home sales could be a realtor if you had to start all over again you got 90 days what is matt craig wow um Knowing what you know right now <laughs> as part of that. Yeah. So, you, like, you get all this 20 years of wisdom to tap into. <laughs> but, man, what's first? Wow. Um, you know, w- if, if it's a new home salesperson, I guess I'll start with that because it, it, would, it would change. If, it was, if you're going to be a loan officer, if you're going to be a real estate agent, my answer would probably change. But specific to new homes, which is, which is what I do, um, I, I would learn the company that you're going to be working for. I would learn... I would learn that in and out. I would learn the culture, learn the background, learn the history. Um, then really from there, I would learn the, the neighborhoods that they build in. I would learn the floor plans, um, just the very basic stuff. So when somebody comes in the in the, in the the model, in the office, um, and they start asking you very basic questions, you, you can answer those. You don't have to be an expert right out the gate. You're not going to learn everything that you need to know in 90 days. Um, anytime I've ever done any kind of training with anybody, I, I usually tell them, yeah, it's it's honestly a solid year before you kind of get your, you know, your bearing straight. You get you get everything clicking. You get you know the words are flowing out of your mouth the, the right <laughs> way. The, um, it, it's much more natural, and and you're starting to answer a lot of questions, whether they're basic or much more in depth. So I would say it, it takes a, a solid year to kind of have it all click and, and really learn what you need to learn um, as you're as you're moving through somebody through the process. Um, but but coming back specifically. Floor plans, neighborhoods, the very basic stuff. Learn the pricing. Um, once you have that down, you can talk to people. And really all all it is in the sales, whether it is as an agent, whether it is as a loan officer, is, is, is talking to people. Best advice I can give you to is have fun. Absolutely have fun with it. Um, I've that. seen so many people... Um, and I know it's hard when you're new, uh, just focused on, you know, answering the questions and what do I have to do next and, and where is this going and am I doing the right things, am I saying the right things and, 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 and you're going to worry about that, but I, I would say try to keep in mind, keep a smile on your face, keep it light and, and have fun. Um, I, I, I'm a big goofball, quite honestly, when, <laughs> when, when I'm out talking to people and, and showing houses, um, I, I, I just, I absolutely, you know, love what I do and, and, and so... Um, I, I really just try to have fun with it. So I would say if you're somebody who's new, and, and like I said, whether you're a loan officer or a real estate agent, just have fun with it and learn the basics. That'd be my best advice, honestly, from the from the beginning. So, so takeaways on that, like what I heard was uh, find a great company and believe in it, right? Get your foundation together, Saturday. foundation yep. that you can build on, and have fun. Yeah. Man, that's summed up pretty well. Yeah, but, absolutely. So, so I want to circle back on something that you talked about just a little bit ago, and, and that's – you know, you do things at a very different pace and also very differently than a lot of people do. And what what I mean by that is you don't embrace technology the way I see some people do. (laughs) You do things very old school. And I mean that in a very positive way because I've gone back to paper and pen in many areas of my life now. He's mastered it. Dude, but it's, you do things in a way that, you know, is, is efficient, is orderly. You have systems, you have processes, but you don't always use the latest, greatest technology. Tell, tell us about technology and Matt Crager. How do you use it to be more efficient in your business? Thanks for pointing that out, Ryan. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> no, I, uh, I I really don't. I I was actually just ha- I had a, a gentleman shadowing me yesterday, and I he was asking me some of those kind of questions like, "What do you do? How do you follow up with people? And, you know, what technology do you use?" And I was like, "I'm pretty old school in that in that yeah. regard." Um, I'm still a guy who will pick up the phone. I'll, I'll call you, check in with you. Um, I'll drop the email for sure. Um, I, I even do handwritten and cards still, even after all these yeah, years in the in the that. in the business. Um, I'll sit down and, I'll, and it doesn't have to be lengthy. Just a just a short, you know, handwritten card. Thanks for stopping in. Um, thanks for you know purchasing a home with us. Whatever it may be, and, and I get that out the door. People don't I, write enough cards. They anymore, they absolutely. don't. Um, with all the new technology, you know, you've got everything from e cards to you know, virtual, virtual uh, uh, tours with with yourself in them, and all these different things that people use, and and I really don't get into any of that. Um, I, I am very old school in that regard. It's the handwritten cards, it's the email, it's the phone call, or or text message. A lot of times these days, and and um, that that's how I approach it. I I really I really am you know old school in that regard. So, um, but I love yeah. that though. Not to interrupt what you yeah. were saying, but I absolutely love that about you because I, I see so many newer salespeople and, and and I find myself getting into this trap sometimes too, where it's, I am so enamored by the shiny object over here. <laughs> oh, there's a squirrel over there. Yeah. And I want to chase that latest, greatest thing. I because like, you think it's going to make your life easier. You think it's going to make everything easier and better, but then. I look at somebody like you and you've got plaques for 30 million, 30 million, 30 million, 30 million littered across your wall and you're just literally doing the basics every single day. Well, and and honestly what you just said there, the basics. I mean, so many people get away from the basics and the ba- basics are very important. Um, the basics are going to what make your business strong and what it's going to continue to make it grow. So, I definitely think there's there's some new technology that can that can certainly help and some some stuff that I'll I'll try to learn, I'm sure here, but um, yeah, I was just even coming back to a story from from yesterday. I have this this guy shadow me's new um, to the industry, and you know, we start talking technology. And like I said, I this kind of what I do. I'm very old school, like I, I just mentioned a few minutes ago. And he said, "Well, have you you been on this website? You've been on that website?" And I said, "I don't have any idea what you're talking about." <laughs> I said, I, "I don't know. I'll check all that out." But no, I I, I pick up the phone and I write the card. So, but uh, uh, but I'm sure there's definitely some stuff out there that could help me. But but I am very. Um, very traditional in, in, in the regards of how I, I handle my business. Um, and then there is even a, a finance aspect to that as well. Um, I, I know most people use you know calculators, they use spreadsheets, things like that when they're running payments or qualifying people and looking at different loan programs. Um, I'm still the guy that grabs my pen and paper in a, in a, in a regular calculator. <laughs> yeah, um, I love and, that. and I will qualify somebody um, with that. And, and um, I, I probably will never change that about myself. So it is how I learned. It is what I will stick with for sure. And and um, I think, too, if you can show people, if you're asking the right questions and you're writing it all out and you're running through different programs and you can show them that and learn kind of the more more old school way of doing things, um, there's lend some credibility in there, too. I think people will know what you're talking about. So if you versus just, hey, you're clicking some buttons and here you go. So but um, I definitely think it's important to uh, to uh, to learn all, all new technology and 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 some of the older traditions with with how you do things. So, well, let's talk about this. Uh, is there anything in this business coming up could be any side of the business that keeps you up at night? Oh, any changes, any that's a good question. Um, nothing probably from an in, from an industry standpoint necessarily keeps me up at night. Although I'm I'm always thinking about different industry changes. Um, you know, I, even though I sell houses, I'm always I'm interested in all aspects of real estate, construction, land development, um, city changes, zoning, all that kind of stuff interests me. Anything that has to do with any of that. Um, you know, in the way of, of, of changes, I mean, I definitely see some different changes coming down the way in, in how we handle neighborhood developments, um, what kind of product that we definitely offer. Um, it is a, it is something that we, as a, as a home builder, uh, it is challenging for us. Um, sometimes all home builders, quite frankly, you know, to get into certain areas of town and do it at an affordable price, which is what we do at Arbor Homes. And and so that's something that can kind of keep me up at night, you know, worrying, hey, where, where's that next neighborhood right. going to be? Sure would love to be in this community, helping the, the people of that community to get into affordable home and and we may not be able to do that just because of municipality changes or zoning changes and things like that so that's that's a little bit different um, from kind of the sale side of things but that is something that does kind of keep me up a little bit keeps me thinking and, and you know what how do we how do we overcome that um, 
And then really from there, um, something else that keeps me up at night, you know, just making sure that my clients are being taken care of. Are they are they moving through the process? Um, have I answered their their questions for the day? Or are, are, is, is the construction manager, you know, getting back to them like they need to be? Is you know, are we are we are we having any issues on the lending side? Just just making sure that they're being taken care of and the questions are being being answered. So I I don't like to. I'm the guy who doesn't like to sh- you know shut it down for the evening until I know I've responded to every email uh, and every phone call and and then I'll be on to it for the next day so i will tell you what you both are extraordinary at this and that is what you just said and that's not finishing the day before everything is done and and that's something that so many people austin and i were talking a couple weeks ago about this and in today's world especially when somebody sends you an email they're not expecting an an answer 12 hours later they're expecting an answer within an hour or two generally is what we found seconds yeah i I think it's i think i I think even actually the data will show you it's i think it's first 15 minutes it's it's something very short but yeah it's amazing and and that's something again i i feel it's a small little foundational piece that most people just ignore that makes an insurmountable difference at the end of the year and your total sales or total people that you have the opportunity to help because when you get back to people before you wrap things up it's just peace of mind for them it's peace of mind for you that you're not stressed out that you forgot something you just did what you needed to do that day and again not to harp on something so basic but something so basic is so pivotal in this business well yeah if i will tell you and 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 both you guys sitting here with me know know what i'm getting ready to say if if they're not hearing from you if they've reached out to you and they're not hearing from you, their mind starts to travel all over yeah. the place, and they're thinking that something's wrong. Some you know, snowballs. This, this guy's not getting back to me, uh, and the, yeah, their mind's going down that rabbit hole, and and who knows where it ends up. So you know, try to get back to people as, as quick as possible, and and put their minds at ease. And quite frankly, it, it may be just a very simple simple question to you, but to them. Um, it could be something that's very important to them, and, and that's something that that you know, as a as a real estate agent, salesperson, um, loan officer, um, that you just kind of be mindful of is you know sometimes, especially the longer that you do this job, you can sometimes go, oh, that's an easy question. I'll get back right. to him in the morning. Um, what's easy to you is not easy to them, and, and they may be maybe very stressed out over it, and and if they don't hear from you, they could be thinking the worst. So. No doubt, no doubt. Well, Matt, you've given us a ton. I kind of want to pick both of your brains since I've got you both in the same room here, real quick. And this is a conversation I'm I'm getting ask this daily at this point, but we're seven, eight years into an upward rise of a real estate market. You both went through a downcline before back in 2007, 2008, after having been in the industries. How much longer can this last? I mean, I just kind of want to get your perspectives on this because we've been going, going, going up for so, so long. You've both seen the other side of it. We've worked through it. (laughs) What's going through your mind with that? What do you tell people? Because a challenge that I, I, I hear with a lot of you know people considering, do I sell, do I buy right now, is they've got all this equity in their house, right? <laughs> We're in such a good spot. Oh my gosh, the market's gone up. But then I can't even replace what I have because the market's also gone up. So what do we do? How do you provide some peace of mind for somebody like that? Because it's, it, it's a dynamic I've never encountered before in my professional career. What are you guys doing with that right now? Uh, I, yeah, I can go first on at least from the lending side, what makes sense for us, the future, no one can tell the future. We have no idea. We know what prices are now. Luckily in Indiana, right, we don't see the huge ups and downs that they do on the coast. So that's always a good thing for us here in the Midwest. But, you know, we almost become a little bit of financial advisors from time to time. And right now people are coming in and say, hey, that question you just asked, should I sell now? Absolutely you should. You should take that equity. You should maybe pay off those higher interest debts that you have and then go get a house and now your monthly overall expenditures are down Mm -hmm. so yeah you might have just been able to replace what you've had but now you don't have a car payment you don't have a credit card and you don't have a student loan yeah right so so from the lending side that's where it makes a lot of sense for us to advise people on what do you see matt from uh helping somebody get from one house to the next right now that's you know it's they're just different moving parts than there ever have been before with that at least in my lifetime yeah there is um you have a lot of different scenarios happening out there right now Uh, you know like austin said um, we don't have the high and low swings like you do on the coast or you're really down in the southern united states these days um Quite honestly, Indianapolis MSA is a very affordable market. It still is a still very is. affordable market. Very. Um, you know, if you've lived in Indianapolis for for uh, for a long period of time, it may seem like the market's gone crazy and it's uh, the prices are out of control. But but quite honestly, they are they are very affordable. Um, I just a quick story. I took a phone call yesterday from a gal and she she um, 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 she mentioned that. Uh, 
uh, I'm moving to Indianapolis. Um, don't really know the different areas of town. Um, kind of give me just a, an over, overview of Indianapolis, different areas and price points and things like that. And I start going through my normal my normal spiel, and <laughs> I'm talking different areas of town and, and, and different price points. And I say, well, you know, this this area of town could be a little bit more expensive. We're kind of in this range here, but over here is a little more for, affordable. And here's this price range. And, and she goes, Matt, she goes, I'm from Alaska. She goes, and, and quite honestly, everywhere you're talking about is extremely affordable. <laughs> so compared to where I live, and I said, oh, Okay, so sometimes you know you forget about those things when people call from from outside the the state of Indiana. But you know, prior to the prior to the downturn, um, Indianapolis at one point was up to about a fifteen thousand permit market. Um, we stay steady right around nine, ten, eleven thousand permits in, in a normal moving market from the new home side. Um, really, since the downturn, we've not really hit over about sixty three hundred uh, permits. And what you're talking about there, um, yeah. just for people that may yeah. not be clear, but you know, back in the 2005, 2006, yeah. there was 15,000 new homes being built in Indianapolis every year. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so for every permit is is, is equal to a house. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we were up to about 15,000 homes. Um, like I said, you know, during a normal just steady um, year, you're nine, ten, eleven thousand, you know, homes per year, um, and we really haven't hit over about 6,300. Uh, we'll see where we end up this year. Um, I do think there's definitely a demand out there. Um, there's there's still a pent up demand out there. Indianapolis is a growing city. A lot of commerce, a lot of businesses yeah. coming to Indianapolis. Um, in the surrounding counties, um, there's there's constantly people moving here. Um, I was just having this conversation the other day. Uh, there's so many people. We get a lot of out of state buyers just because they're coming here for work. Um, Who are some of those I, employers that you're seeing? Oh, a lot of them are are, are engineering firms. Um, um, a lot of them. Um, can be industrial. I know we just opened up a, an Amazon, you know, warehouse down in Greenwood. Um, uh, a lot of tech stuff, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, I've seen um, um, all all different, uh, you know, all different kinds. Of, those are three just recently, just to kind of pinpoint that that I've seen. But um, I, I do get a lot of a lot of people from from out of town that are constantly moving to Indianapolis. Um, we do have a fair amount of. Uh, uh, military presence here in the state. We do a lot of. I know Austin does a lot of VA loans. We have a lot of people moving in and out for, with with the, you know, with the military and and uh, we do have DFAS up in Lawrence and uh, the Department of Defense up there and and um, yeah, just a lot of people from out of town. It's just a growing city and I, I I do I do believe in Indianapolis. I think it's just an absolutely great city to live in. Very affordable. I do see us continuing to grow um, outside of just some of the some of the challenges that you have with with getting into certain areas and being able to provide that 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 affordable product i think we're fine i think we're going to continue to see the the homes grow i think we'll want to see back up into that nine thousand range i am not worried about a downturn really here in indianapolis um at, at all from that standpoint the demand's there the people are here and, and we've definitely got the, the housing to be able to support it so i think that's really the thing i, I mean the jobs are there unemployment's as low as it's been yeah. consumer confidence is incredibly high i mean yeah. all the indicators that say the same still looks good are there right now and rates are staying low rates are staying low yeah. so it's uh pick up the phone and do some of that work but uh matt we cannot tell you how much we beyond appreciate you coming in today and uh spending a few oh, minutes I'm, with us this and was uh, awesome i know i've taken away a couple things i've got a i've got about two pages of notes here already so i really do appreciate you coming in today man it's been a pleasure absolutely having you. No, Thank thanks you, for having me guys i appreciate it tremendously cool yep. man thanks yep. a lot thanks.